Hey everybody, Uncle Rich here for Who's Telling the Truth. Uh, today is uh, June 2nd, 2014. This is show 52. Can you see the sign? Is that getting through? Can you see the sign? And today's show is called, can you see that? Yes. Yeah? yeah. Today's show is called go. Coke This. Mm -hmm. And you're going to say, Rich, that sign doesn't say Coke This. That says, catch this. Well, guys, tonight's show, we're going to feature two of the richest guys in the world. And they pronounce their name Coke. But because we're doing Solarized Brookfield, I have to behave in the beginning of the show. So we won't get to the Coke brothers until the second half. But tonight's show, we're going to talk about Solarized Brookfield. They're making some terrific gains. And uh, we're going to actually show you a house in, in Waterbury where they used um, the Smart E uh, loan plan. We're going to try to explain that to you. And then we're going to take a look at, you know, there's different ways to skin a cat, so to speak, when it comes to solar. And we're going to show you an interesting... Uh, view on some, uh, some panels that you can actually put on your deck. I mean, I, you'll see, I tell you, it's something, it, they actually generate, they have their own inverters and you can feed it right into your house and when you see it, you'll be impressed. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways we can go about this. But most importantly tonight, we want to talk about investing in solar because that's what you're doing. You know, when you put solar panels on your roof, you're making an investment in the future. And you're going to see, and we're going to prove to you, that how beneficial solar panels can be and how they can benefit the company. And there's so many things that solar panels do. I mean, they help, um, they help people become, uh, you know, they help communities become uh, job creators. <laughs> Uh, they help uh, you know, the free market, you're exploiting the free market, and capitalism. So, you know, like we say with solar panels, guys, you could, you could go ahead with solar panels because you want to be warm and fuzzy, or you could be cold and greedy. It doesn't matter. As long as you want to put them on your roof, rent out your roof, and make money. So anyway, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna show you how to invest and, and the whole idea behind it. Then we're going to go to John Lennon, which is our cutoff point. And when we go to the John Lennon clip, the gloves come off and the bada binging starts. And we're going to start with a clip from Lawrence Krauss, a uh, 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 particle uh, physics guy. I tell you, he's so. Br I, uh, a lot of times I watch him debate and I sit there in awe. Well, he's going to blow you away tonight. And. Uh, after, we're going to show you um, uh, some things with some, some words that you, you know, I tell you, a lot of times uh, in cult issues, like in music, you know, a lot of times you'll sing along to a song and you really don't know what you're singing along to. And tonight I'm going to show you a cute way of uh, something that I've been singing for years and I never knew what the words were. But then... We're going to get to the meat of the matter, and it's the Koch brothers. And guys, you're not going to believe this. Through Alec, they went and they were able to impose fines. To impose fines on people that put solar panels on their roofs. You think these guys, the, the two of the richest guys in the world, would want to welcome the free market? They don't. They don't want nothing that's free. They want you to pay for it. Well, I'm not supposed to get excited until the second half of the show, so I'll calm down. All right. But, and that's basically, you know, what we're, we're going to talk about the Koch brothers and why they're trying to buy this country. And it's a shame that they are. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm here, one of the reasons why I do this show. You know, I am, I've had it. I have just had it. And they're not going to get away with it anymore. And, you know, it's just a little bit. It's a little bit here. It's a little bit there. But what people are going to start to understand 
is when you can make money by putting solar panels on your roof, the game's over. People are going to go, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So, John, let's start. Let's start with the first clip. And these are the currents in Waterbury. And I want you to pay attention to three things when you watch this clip. Number one, I want you to look at how nice the house looks with the solar panels. I mean, it just looks like the solar panels belong there. Number two, I want you to take a look at their young daughter. She's gorgeous. I don't know, maybe three, four years old. And I want you to keep that in mind. And the last thing is, I want you to take a look at the money they saved. Guys, last year, they saved $1,353 on their electric bill. You think they're gonna have any trouble banking that money for their daughter's college education? Not at all. A gift from the sun. You just gotta learn how to use it. John, hit us with the clip. What attracted us most to the Smarty Loan was the fact that it was specifically tailored to the kinds of projects that we wanted to do in the home. When I first brought the solar idea home, uh, we had three or four different contractors come to the uh, place to kind of give us estimates, and uh, the prices came back a little bit higher than we thought. I just looked at him and I was like, how are we going to do this right now? But then when one of our contractors uh, mentioned the Smarty Loan, um, we figured that you know through financing we could actually go ahead and, and do the project. You know, the application process was just a, a few pages and some documentation, and the closing took, I, I'd say, no more than a half an hour. Now we have them, and we're, we're seeing real savings. It's been in operation for a month and a half, and we've done about 1,200 uh, kilowatt hours, which is, which is great. So for the, thus far, we've been very, very pleased with it. For those who have that upfront capital as a barrier to solar, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who want to go forward with a project like this. I think the Smarty Loan is going to make a real difference. Guys, all you gotta do is pick up the phone, call Ross Solar, have him come over to your house, give you an estimate. And speaking of Ross Solar, guys, so far in Brookfield, they've gotten 28 inquiries. 28 people requested that they come out. The, uh, you know, the, the, the date is still not in because you know, they, they've got a you know, do all the proposals and everything, but things are starting to happen. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, I don't know, we're, we're going we're gonna to see. But in the future, this is, I tell you, the reason why I showed this is there's so many different ways that you could take advantage of solar. And now we're going to show you a panel system that you can, you, know, you can actually put on your deck. So rather than talk about it, we'll let the video do the talking. John? Hi, I'm going to walk you through the new Deck Power 120 solar appliance from Spinray Energy. We've all seen solar panels before, but Spinray thought most people would prefer a simpler, more affordable solution to their green energy needs a do-it-yourself solar appliance. The Deck Power 120 is the only solar appliance that produces 120 volt, 60 hertz AC electricity while using a UL certified grid tie microinverter with outdoor waterproof protection. Professional roof installations can double the cost of your solar project. But if you're one of the millions of Americans that have a deck, it's finally easy being green. Simply plug into a standard 120 volt receptacle. No drilling or modifying your deck. No huge contractor build. No climbing the roof to brush off snow or leaves. And no headaches. Just simple green energy. Each Deck Power 120 comes with everything you need to start producing electricity from the sun. An aluminum deck bracket, a 240 watt high efficiency monocrystalline solar panel, and a 120 volt 60 hertz microinverter. From underneath the panel, you'll see the pre-installed microinverter, 
which converts the DC electricity to 120 volt AC household electricity. Both the panel and the microinverter are certified to UL and the inverter will immediately stop any backfeeding if there is a loss of power from the utility for the safety of any line workers. Up to five of these solar appliances can be plugged into a single outlet, allowing the homeowner to buy kits over time with just over a thousand watts of green electricity possible with five deck power kits strung together. Guys, you know what I'd like to see? You know, I'm in the construction trades. And a lot of times, I got to bring a generator on the job site. And it's a pain in the butt. I mean, really, it's just a pain. Wouldn't that be something if you could just put a solar panel out, you know? And, and, and if it was enough to power a saw or, or whatever you're using. And I mean, all these little, all these things, they're all starting... It's all starting to come together. And I mean, you know, I've, I've never shown you some of the solar uh, ovens that, that, uh, that I've seen in Africa and stuff, but I mean, there's so much. And, and I tell you, with what's gonna happen, especially since what the president uh, did this week, um, you know, with the, uh, the fact with the war on carbon, uh, you know, and, and I've got some news. Uh, this is from uh, uh, Climate Progress. It's written by Kylie Roth, and it was published on May 31st, 2014. U.S. residential solar just beat commercial installations for the first time. That's right, guys. The first quarter of 2014 was another big one for the U.S. solar industry, with 74% of all new electricity generation across the country coming from solar. The 1,330 megawatts of solar photo photovoltaics installed last quarter bring the total in the U.S. up 14.8 gigawatts of installed capacity enough to power three million homes. Guys, we're starting, we're starting to get there. In addition to being the largest quarter ever for concentrating solar power, a method of large scale solar generation that uses a unique salt battery to allow the solar plant to keep producing power even when the sun goes down. Guys, remember we did the, uh, the, the show on Ivanpah and we showed you with the, uh, with the Helio stats. And I mean, Ivanpah was, was something to, 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 to blow our horn over. But uh, the residential, finally, residential solar finally surpassed commercial. Residential uh, installed 232 megawatts to commercials 225. <laughs> so it's awful close, but hey, guys, people are starting to embrace the idea. And, you know, uh, like I said, in Brookfield, with all the incentives that you're being offered, you know, we saw a system, a $31,000 system can be put in for about $13,000. Think about that. For $13,000, you could be generating your own electricity. Your payback is gonna be about six years and you know what? All the profit from then on is yours. And with a 25 year warranty on the panels, you're gonna be putting money in your pocket for a long time. And like I said with the little girl, that's her college education right there. The parents had the wherewithal and the foresight to say, hey, Let's take advantage of this opportunity. But in Brookfield, you have even a bigger opportunity because of the incentives. So that's why, guys, you only have until September 30th. All right, now, 
The next clip is going to be, it's really investing in your home. And when you watch this clip, I want you to notice how nice the panels look on most of the houses. And you're going to see five or six different houses. And watch what they're doing in Massachusetts. And some of the solar wrecks, you know, remember from one of the other shows where we showed you the solar wrecks. It's a little bit different in Massachusetts, but you'll get the whole flavor of the idea and you'll be able to see what other people are doing and how their communities and themselves, how they're benefiting from a gift from the sun, solar power. John, hit it. The sun, our ultimate source of life and energy. It's estimated that every hour enough solar energy reaches the Earth's surface to power the entire planet for a year. Today, many Massachusetts residents are investing in solar, and for a wide range of reasons. Every bit of the electricity that's produced is either we're using it or we're sending it back to Instar. We're reducing our carbon footprint from this. My wife and I um, have wanted to uh, you know, take the right steps for the planet. We need to get off oil. It's very important for us not to be dependent on oil, and we have the means to do it. Massachusetts, like the other New England and Northeast states, uh, is at the end of the energy pipeline, the natural gas pipeline. We don't have the type of indigenous fuel sources that other states can benefit from. And so it's important for us to look at a diversified uh, fuel strategy. And renewable energy, along with other fuel sources, are important for Massachusetts energy needs. Uh, in addition, uh, Massachusetts has uh, very strong greenhouse gas reduction goals, environmental goals. And so renewable energy and solar PV as a technology helps us meet our overall goals. They work year round. They're um, actually pretty productive in the spring and in the fall, even though it's colder, because the transistors, from what I understand, actually function better in the cooler weather than they do in the warmer weather. The solar panels work more efficiently when they're colder. They have what's called a negative temperature coefficient that just means on hot sunny days they're less efficient and on cold sunny days they're more efficient. Today so far we've produced 5.25 kilowatt hours of electricity and it's what only uh, uh, 1140 or so. So we're doing pretty well. If you look at the um, chart below you can see this is yesterday as it started to get later in the day um, last night and now the panels are beginning to produce again so if I look at any point on the uh, line for example, that's 8.10 in the morning. Uh, and if I look up here, it's just about now. Well, actually, it's, it's a half an hour behind. So I can follow the production of my electricity. But what makes a home a good candidate for solar panels? And what factors should be taken into consideration? Uh, this house has a great southern exposure. It has very little shading and it's at the optimal angle, which is around 35 to 40 degrees. It makes it great for solar. And so I'm looking at the surrounding buildings and trees and what might shade uh, the, the roof, if it's shaded at all. I'm also looking at the access to the roof, you know, because a uh, big part of the job is the physical part of putting the panels up there and how, how are we going to get up and do that? How are we going to stage the job? I got it. Where will we, you know, have the electric run down to the basement? Um, so there's, there's roof work, there's examining the structure of the rafters, make sure uh, the, the building is structurally sufficient to put solar panels on. Then you also take a look at uh, the utility room where the electric panel is, what kind of service does the house have, um, are there open breakers in the electrical pa electric panel that we can use, um, things like that. While the upfront expenses may seem steep at first, there are a number of incentives to help defray the costs. There are the solar renewable energy certificates, there are also rebates available, there's an income tax credit that's available, there's a sales tax exemption, there's a 30% federal uh, tax credit available. So the state, I think, has a big piece of this, and I think that allows the vendors then to really have something more to sell and bring down the cost Absolutely. of the, the total cost in the payback period. Uh, Massachusetts has a portfolio standard that all the utilities need to make so they, they have to get a certain percentage of their power from solar power and, and what the utilities do, well they'll buy your SREX as a way to count uh, your renewable production in their portfolio and help you fund your project. 
The solar certificates um, was something that we didn't even know about, and they're called solar recs. And apparently for every thousand kilowatts that you generate with your system, you are issued a certificate. Uh, as long as I'm producing electricity by these solar panels, um, I'll be entitled to solar recs. And those solar recs are selling at a pretty good rate right now. Yeah, there are two models. One is the lease model, and one is the direct ownership model. The leasing model is very attractive, especially for those homeowners or uh, system owners that don't have the upfront capital uh, to put down to purchase the system. So you always know for the next 20 years of the life of the lease contract what your price for your electricity is going to be, which is different than right now if you're with the utility. It could fluctuate depending on a number of variables. Uh, and there is uh, no cost generally to the owner of the system upfront. Solar panels can not only power your home, but the excess electricity can actually be sold back to the utility company. We um, typically have a bill of somewhere in the vicinity of uh, about $140 a month. Right now, we're looking at the average being somewhere around $35 to $45. The second part is um, that we have the ability to um, net meter our electricity back to NSTAR. And so that's, that's a positive. So if we're producing more electricity during the daytime um, than we're using, then I'm net metering back to NSTAR and, and at the same exact rate, retail rate, that they're charging me for electricity for the uh, kilowatt hours. Uh, we haven't had an electrical bill since they turned it on. Um, we've generated about 6,200 kilowatt hours as of today, and we've sent 3,200 of them back to the grid. So we've only used a net of 3,000 kilowatt hours so far. Of course, not every home is a perfect fit for solar power. But for those that are, is it worth it? I, I wish we'd done this 10 years ago if I'd known it, it was going to pay off like it did. Um, we just didn't know, you know, when you don't know and you're investigating and you're waiting for a time to have everything catch on. Um, we're extremely happy. I wish we had a bigger roof. Once you put it in and you see how it works, I think you become more passionate about it. And once you realize that the state is behind it as well. Yeah, and, and uh, the federal government actually is, is also behind it because I also get a federal tax credit. Right. Uh, now, which it's, is sizable. It's, it's interesting because we're in Florida part of the year and they have no incentives. I think one of one important thing to note is that um, solar PV is both from a energy a diversity perspective and from a uh, environmental perspective, a very positive type of uh, renewable energy generation that is not just available to businesses uh, and governments, but also to residents. And we're excited here in Massachusetts to see the solar PV market really growing and there being a lot of opportunity across all sectors to take advantage of it. Whenever we install a solar panel, that piece of equipment is going to be generating clean electricity for at least 25 years. And so maybe even long after I'm gone, this equipment that we're installing today is going to be doing good for everyone. And uh, er you know, every once in a while we have to kind of stop and remind ourselves that uh, we're in the business of doing things not just for today but for the next generation and that, that is exciting. You know, guys, there's one thing in solar that we haven't mentioned, and it's an extraneous cost that we'll never, we'll never have to absorb. We will never have to send our kids to fight for solar. It'll never happen. Not like we're sending them to fight in the Middle East over all. We don't fight over the sun. It's free for everybody. As much as you want and more. Take it. It's yours. And you know what? You can have a healthy dose of wind also. <laughs> all right, guys. That's the nice portion of the show. <laughs> now the gloves come off, and we're going to start giving the Koch brothers the old bada bang. But first, we let John Lennon put a little salt in the wound. Hit it. Death of seeing things from tight lipped condescending mama's 
Guys, as only John Lennon can say it and put it, I mean, just unbelievable. All right, so now we're in the portion of the show where we can really have some fun. And the first person we're going to feature is one of my favorites, Lawrence Krauss. This guy is so smart, I just sit there, I, I tell you, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. Sometimes it's like he's a rock star. I mean, he just, I sit there in awe, and I tell you what, hopefully, after you watch this clip, you'll be in awe as well. John? It's a beautiful picture from the Hubble Space Telescope of a distant galaxy, far, far away and long, long ago. And, uh, and there's a whole galaxy, it's about a billion light years away. We're looking at it as it looked a billion years ago. So, so many of those stars no longer exist. And here's an object that's just a, a, as bright as the whole center of the galaxy. You think it's a star that's near in our galaxy that just got caught in the picture frame. It's not. It's a star on the edge of that galaxy that has exploded. And exploding stars shine with the brightness of 10 billion stars. They're the brightest fireworks in the universe, supernovae. And they're remarkable, and I, I keep having asides, maybe I'll get to my point eventually, but um, the, the, um, this is something that, that, that I wrote a whole book about, and someone asked me yesterday why I wrote that book. Because it is the most poetic thing I know about the universe. Um, Richard wrote a great book called, our, uh, called, what's it called, Our Ancestors, what's it called? Ancestors' Tale, yes, I, I wanted to make sure I got that right. Uh, and, and I wrote a book that was a different Ancestors' Tale, it was called Adam. But the amazing thing is that every atom in your body came from a star that exploded. And the atoms in your left hand probably came from a different star than your right hand. It really is the most poetic thing I know about physics. You are all stardust. You couldn't be here if stars hadn't exploded because the elements, the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, iron, all the things that matter for evolution weren't created at the beginning of time. They're created in the nuclear furnaces of stars and the only way they can get into your body is if the stars were kind enough to explode. So forget Jesus, the stars died so that you could be here today, okay? And, and anyway. <laughs> so forget Jesus, this, a star had to die so you, could, so you could be born. And it's the truth. I mean, it's, it's just a simple truth. And you know, you, you, you can't deny it. And you know, whenever it comes to a stardust, I always like to think back to an old song, and, and, and I'm sure that you, you're, it's probably going through your mind now. Think of a song with the name Stardust in it. But before I, we play that song, I want to uh, tell you a little story. My older sister, who's not with us anymore, uh, we were driving as kids, and uh, you know we had the radio going, we're driving along, and the song My Girl, by the Temptations is playing. I'm sure you're all. I've got sunshine. Doo, 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 doo. 
On a cloudy day. Doom, 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 doom. Well, anyway, you know how the song goes. So we're sitting there and we're driving along and we're singing. And I think the words are <clears throat> where it goes, the guy goes, I don't need no money more than my pay. And my sister goes, What did you just say? <laughs> I said, he just, he said, I don't need, I don't need no money more than my pay. And she goes, no. She goes, he said, I don't need more money, fortune, or fame. <laughs> and I said, you know, that sounds better. <laughs> but the next clip we're going to do refers to stardust and guys I'm sure that you've heard this so many times and you probably sing along but tonight we're gonna actually play the we're gonna show you the words and you're gonna go oh so that's what he's been saying so John let's have some fun and hit it on our techniques guys <laughs> but you know so many times I listened to that song and I knew he was saying we are a stardust I didn't know he was saying we are billion year old carbon because that's what we are you know carbon and oxygen and nitrogen and some iron and some other good stuffs brought to us by an exploding star kind of simple and guys that's you know I was thinking about the sun and, 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 and stars, and for some reason, I always thought the sun was like a big rock. It's not, it's a ball of gas. I, didn't, I mean, I just, you know, I, it just never crossed my mind. I thought it was solid. It's, uh, oh, and what goes on there, it's, it's amazing. So, uh, all right, now we're gonna get back to the, uh, to the, oh, and by the way, I was at Woodstock. Three days of peace and love. <laughs> I want to tell you. It was three days of mud. Me and my buddies, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I tell you, it was, a, it was a cultural event. I mean, you know, I, I'm so happy. And, uh, you know, when they were talking about the, uh, the bomber jet, uh, you know, the, the, the bomber jets flying overhead, the, the army actually had helicopters. I mean, they had to bring stuff in. The roads were closed. Isn't that, what, a, what a mess, what a mess. But I'm still here and, you know, something you can only do when you're 16 years old, that's for sure. <laughs> Sleeping in mud. All right, so anyway, now we're gonna give the old bada bing to the Koch brothers. And guys, I, it, it's beyond, it just, it goes beyond me how greedy these guys have to be. I mean, how you want to make people pay a fine to put solar panels on their roof because, you know, you would think that they're capitalists and they want to protect the free market. They don't want to protect the free market. They want to protect their pocketbooks, and that's all they do. 
And I tell you, the way they exploit the American public and the way they deceive everybody. And, you know, uh, before I came down here, I'm watching Fox News, and you guys know why I watch Fox News. And I'm watching Fox News, and, you know, President Obama came up with a big carbon plan today. They're going to cut uh, carbon by 30% by the year 2030. So who does Fox have on? Jay Lear from the Heartland Institute. Remember, we did a thing on the Heartland Institute about three shows ago. The Heartland Institute, which is Coke-funded. Coke-funded, they funded the NIPCC. What's the NIPCC? Not the inner Planetary Climate Commission. Could you imagine that? They got to make up something directly opposite of what the IPCC did. Why? Because they hate the American people. They hate your neighbors. They hate your kids. They want to put carbon in the air at no cost. And they don't want to pay to clean it up. It ain't going to... That... that ah. John, <laughs> it's a good thing I had that work done on my heart. <laughs> John, hit us with the next clip so everybody can understand why I'm getting so upset. Over the past few years, solar energy has been, uh, it's been going down in price in terms of getting a system set up for your home. It's becoming more cost effective with non-renewable uh, sources of energy. And it seems like a great thing to do for your home. If you can afford to set it up, you'll save money on your energy bill every month. You'll generate less carbon. It creates jobs locally and things like that. So it seems like a win-win, uh, but Alec is traveling around the country to convince state legislatures that in fact it is a horrible thing. Uh, now, Alec, as you probably remember, is, uh, is funded in part by the Koch brothers. Now, they have significant energy interests. And what they're doing is they're trying to roll back state reforms to uh, like produce a renewable energy mandate, to encourage people to do solar energy and things like that. And so specifically in Arizona, what they did to solar energy users is insane. Now, currently, if you have uh, solar panels, uh, frequently you will produce more energy at one time than you can use. And what they have is a system called net metering that allows you to sell back that energy over the grid to power companies. And you get uh, credits for that. You get money for that. And so Alec is going in, and they successfully lobbied for and got a fine effectively on people doing net metering in Arizona, where now they will pay a fine of about $5 a month extra. Now, that's a very small amount. The solar energy in Arizona, can, uh, the companies consider that a win because Alec was uh, advocating for a potential fine of up to $100, which would make it in no way cost effective versus traditional non renewable sources of energy. And so they successfully lobbied for that. Now, it's only $5 there, but you know that they're going to do this in other states and if you are a potential uh, user of solar energy in the future you should be worried about this because Koch brothers and their I guess their affiliates are going around trying to make it impossible for that to be cost effective in America now, now let me explain why, how much the Koch brothers hate the free market so first of all uh, this is actually a free market idea to say that if you're producing more energy, well, you put it back into the market, you sell it in the market, and you get some money for it, and that's a g good way. And in fact, that way, in some ways, you're competing with the huge utility companies as well. And you're creating this free market where people have an incentive to go solar, to go green energy, that both helps the environment, puts money in their pocket. It's just a win all around. Now, who it's not a win for is the guys who run companies that are based on fossil fuels. And who would that be? Oh, right, the Koch brothers, okay? okay? So what they're doing is the definition of crony capitalism, where they go into the politicians that they grease at the local level here in Arizona, and then they're gonna try to throughout the country and say, hey, listen, that whole free market idea you have with the solar panels, ixnay on that, okay? Instead, kill my competition for me find them to the point of trying to put them out of business. Because I hate the free market. I don't want to compete with solar energy. I just want you to give me every advantage so that my fossil fuel company does better. Now, I guess this is somewhat sensible given the fact of how Coke Industries made their money in the first place by working for Joseph Stalin. Okay, no, and that's literally true. Look it up. Okay, their brother, their father, Fred Koch, made their original fortune 
working for Stalin. And then he felt so guilty about it that he founded the, helped to found the John Birch Society, he went super right wing, oh, I hate the communists, I really do. I hate those commies who gave me all my money. Right? And so now his sons have come full circle with like, oh, we're libertarians, we stand up for the free market and competition. Secretly though, here's the money, your bribe, your legal bribe, so you go kill the solar companies so I can make more money. They don't believe in America, they don't believe in capitalism, all they believe in is total and utter greed by any means necessary. So you're telling me that the Koch brothers, their father, made their money by working with the communists and Stalin. Stalin. But Barack Obama has been infected by his father because he met him for 10 minutes one time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you wrote a book about the dreams of my father regarding the Koch brothers, mm -hmm. he'd be like, oh man, after working with Stalin, he dreamed about working with Mao. <laughs> <laughs> so why doesn't somebody who's smart and writes books, why don't they, why doesn't Chris Hedges write a book about? No, no, I'll tell you what, no, that's in plenty of books. You hope, yeah, everybody knows, uh, like if you did any research into it, that Fred Koch that made his money that way, right? But it never it, comes it, up. No, the reason it doesn't come up is because it's impolite. So mainstream media thinks that, well, it's very impolite to mention how the Koch brothers initially made their money, right? And, and not to be fair, the Koch brothers was their dad, it wasn't them, right? And it's impolite to mention how so many of the uh, elite families in the country also had deals with the Germans during World War II. Now, before we went to war with them, most of, mostly, some a little after we went to war with them, and did Prescott Bush have deals with the Germans before the war? That's very impolite. No. Uh, that is, creates awkward moments at the cocktail party. <laughs> my, my final point that I want to make on this is about its significance, because it might seem to many people, most of you do not have solar panels on your home, and it might seem like, well, it's not much money that they're being charged, although it could go up in the future. It's that it, myself, just speaking for myself as a young, fairly nerdy liberal, I look to the future and just assume that we're going to get to this, this land of great technology. You see movies like iRobot or Minority Report, and everything is so advanced. And what they don't say in those movies is that every one of those advanced technologies that had to replace an antiquated technology, the people who had a vested interest in those used their power and established position to lobby for bills to stop those new technologies, to buy out patents as, I forget the company, but there's a company just about 10 years ago that bought an advanced design for a battery that could have powered early electric cars. They bought the patent and sat on it, never produced anything with it. Like that stuff happens in so many different areas and they're trying to stop us from getting to that advanced future that I await. Guys, what is it with these guys? I mean, what is the problem? I mean, is it they, they hate everybody? I mean, say something's wrong here. All right, the next clip we're going to do is who are the Cokes? And what do they want? Because, I mean, what, really, what do they want? Do they want to drive everybody into poverty? Is that their idea? Do they want to exploit everybody? Do they want to make sure that nobody gets a minimum wage? Do they want to make sure that there's no government so that there's no regulation? Hey, you want to work here? We don't pay you. You pay us to come work here. This is how these guys think. You know, where, where every time I hear regulation, it, they don't want regulations because they can't hose you if there's regulations. Like when it comes to overtime, you want to get paid for overtime? No, 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 no. Be thankful we're letting you work overtime. We're not going to pay you time and a half. You're a woman. You want to get paid equal to the men? What are you, crazy? You're a woman. You don't deserve as much as a man gets. And how do these guys, how do they wake up in the morning? How do they look themselves in a mirror? God, I, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> All right, John. Let's, I don't know, let's play the next clip and you guys can get as excited as I am. Hit it. Senator Bernie Sanders has been highlighting daily, pointing to the party's platform. Here's Sanders on, in the Huffington Post, quote, they want to repeal every piece of major legislation that has been signed into law over the past 80 years that has protected the middle class, the elderly, the children, the sick, and most vulnerable in this country. And the Cokes haven't been shy about using their money to try and influence the country in a more libertarian direction. 
Think Progress reports that the brothers are not just spending their money to influence politics. Quote, the Koch brothers also funnel millions of dollars into the education system using their network of conservative groups. A new report from the Center on Public Integrity finds that Koch groups delivered more than $12.7 million to 163 colleges and universities around the country in 2012. According to the report, two Koch groups, Koch groups that are funded by the Koch brothers are either vaguely more specifically oriented around libertarian and conservative ideas. For example, the Charles Koch Foundation con contracted the economics department at Florida State University to select professors through a Koch-appointed committee. So it's not exactly unusual for an institute with the Koch name on it to go outside the realm of traditional politics and toward social issues. But will forums like the one last night in Texas help change people's view of the Koch brand? Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont joins me now. Um, Senator, thank you for being here. My pleasure. And I don't know if you were able to hear Gary Bledsoe from the Texas NAACP, but he talked about working with the Koch Institute uh, in the area of criminal justice, even as he's fighting, in, in many cases, Koch-funded groups who he says uh, are the far right that are removing the moderate senator, the moderate members of the Republican Party from the state legislature. Do you see a contradiction there? Well, I don't want to question the motives of people who are involved on that issue, which is a huge issue. We have a significant percentage of young African Americans who are in the criminal justice system, and we've got to do something about that. But this is what I do know. Uh, the Koch brothers, as you've just mentioned, are the second wealthiest family in this country. And as a result of Citizens United, they have and will spend hundreds of millions of dollars, if not over a period of time, billions of dollars, to elect candidates to office who believe tax breaks for the wealthiest people and major cuts or the privatization of Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, food stamps, education. They are, the Koch brothers, helping to lead the war, in my view, against working families in this country and are part of the reason that we have so much wealth and income inequality such that the rich are doing much richer, are getting much richer, while everybody else is seeing a decline in their standard of living. And I want to, uh, to you know, pull a little bit of a quote from what you have uh, actually put on your website. And you're talking about the Koch brothers. You said the Libertarian Party platform in 1980 called for abolishing the minimum wage, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and income taxes. David Koch was the candidate for vice president that year on a ticket headed by Edward Clark. They thought Ronald Reagan was too liberal. Today, David Koch and his brother Charles have turned those 1980 extreme ideas into mainstream Republican Party orthodoxy by putting their fortune behind right-wing politicians and think tanks. Why, sir, are you now uh, and other um, uh, people who oppose the agenda of the Koch brothers are really taking to highlighting them specifically, highlighting the Kochs personally? Why, do you, why are you doing that? Troy, I will tell you why. I fear very much, and I think people may think that I'm overstating this, I fear very much that this country is losing its democratic foundations and moving toward an oligarchic form of society where a handful of billionaires will control not only the economy, but the political life of this nation. What you are looking at right now is a extreme right-wing family who believe all the things that you've just indicated. They don't believe that we should simply not raise the minimum wage. These guys believe that we should do away with the minimum wage. And if you had to work for three bucks an hour or two bucks an hour, that's freedom. That's your freedom. And these guys believe that we should privatize Social Security, massive cuts in Medicaid, no support for women's rights, etc. They believe the federal government is terrible and they want to move toward a society where the big money interests control the economy and the political life. I highlighted the 1980 libertarian platform for a simple reason. In 1980, that, that party got 1% of the vote, and most people thought that these guys were pretty crazy, pretty extreme, pretty out there. If you look at the issues they talked about then, their point of view, many of those same ideas are now mainstream Republican Party. You talk about minimum wage, you have most Republicans now in Congress not only opposed to raising it, they believe we should abolish the concept of the minimum wage. That's what the Koch brothers talked about 34 years ago. Social Security, Medicare, 
Look at the Ryan budget. What you are seeing is, as a result of the Koch brothers and others, a Republican Party moving from what used to be a right center party, a moderate conservative party, to a right wing extremist party. That is probably the most important development in recent politics, the degree to which the Republican Party has moved to the right and has no stomach for moderates in their party anymore. Yep, and that there is some irony that the one area there, there seems to be convergence between left and libertarian right is this issue of criminal justice. Um, thank you so much, sir. Uh, Senator Bernie Sanders, thank you for being here. Thank you. All right, next, the Bailey's for Senate. We'll read between the lines on the Democrats' new potential play for Kansas. Guys, it's, it's hard to believe the way they are. I mean, it's... I, I just don't get it. I can't, I can't understand it. I, it doesn't, it doesn't work for me. I, I can't, I, there's no, I, you can't explain it to me. It's not possible. When you have that much money and, and why you want to harm your fellow Americans by making sure that you have more so that they can have less. These are the guys that when they have a pizza party, if they had a, a, a pizza party with a pizza with a hundred slices, they would walk up and they would take 99 of them and leave one for everybody else. This is the way their brains function. Why, I, I don't know. You try to explain it to me, because I can't understand it. All right, the next, the next clip, guys, Robert G Greenwald, came out with the movie The Koch Brothers Exposed two years ago. Well, he came out with the 2014 version. And I tell you, they're making it free and available to everybody so people can see how evil these people really are. So we're going to show you this first clip, and the only thing I can tell you is it's chilling. Chilling. John? <laughs> Tell us what happened on Capitol Hill. What was this controversy over your film? Verse is really another example of how the Kochs work, which is they try to change the conversation. The Koch lawyer put out a statement immediately. Then uh, candidates who receive money from the Kochs picked up the statement and carried their water for to really stop free speech and prevent the public air of the clips from the film. Of course, it can't happen today because millions of people are going to see the full film for free on the internet. But it was really an effort to remove the, remove the conversation so that we weren't talking about the fundamental issue which is the hundreds of millions of dollars being spent. But there was some silly about could it be shown or could it not be shown. Diversion, diversion, and diversion. Uh, Robert Greenwald, your film notes that each Koch brother makes $1.8 million every hour. It would take a minimum wage worker 76 years to make that. I want to turn to a new clip in your updated film, Koch Brothers Exposed 2014 edition. This is Erica Jackson, a minimum wage worker. Being on minimum wage is, is really hard getting by. I, I live on houses through Section 8, but um, you know, I can't afford to find anything extra or anything better. It's, it's hard trying to get by. I think the fact that the Koch brothers are trying to take away minimum wage is ridiculous. I'm just fit the forms that what well, my public assistance they require in order to get assistance with anything. If minimum wage was just raised a dollar, I wouldn't. Public assistance. Thirteen million a day uh, sounds wonderful, and I couldn't imagine anybody making that much concern with somebody making minimum wage. 
It just doesn't make sense to me how they could even consider taking it away or lowering anything. I think they'd be giving back in, in helping us. And in this clip, of Koch brothers exposed. Uh, we see how the Koch brothers, this is Charles and David Koch, they're actually four, but how Charles and David Koch have attacked labor unions. Really what we would like to see is to take the unions out at the knee okay. so they don't have the resources to fight these battles. This is a coordinated effort where you have ALEC and American and Prosperity, the Koch brothers and their allies spending millions and millions and millions of dollars to fight unions and to take this country backwards. The Koch brothers want to eliminate the ability for working folk to have power at either the ballot box or the bargaining table. So they try to eliminate trade unions. The Koch brothers not only want to unions, but they want to destroy the lives of working people across this country. They do not want to have safety regulations. They do not want workers able to negotiate wages and benefits. That's a clip of uh, Robert Greenwald's new film, Koch Brothers Exposed, the 2014 edition. Guys. You know, I, I often used to wonder on Fox, all my, my fox Institute friends, why they were always bashing the union. It's really simple. If you take out the union, people have no protection. They ha you know, they, you know, you're going to work when we tell you you're going to work. You're going to work hard, you're going to do what we tell you to do, and you're going to do it for less than you're doing it now. And that's the way it's going to hey. Stop it. Stop it. You know, we need to treat everybody with dignity and respect. And like a lot of people say, you know, those people don't have an education, the people that are working minimum wage. You know, look, look at what they're doing. Anybody could do that kind of work. I want to tell you something. You think about working at McDonald's and putting up with the American public all day long. I tell you what, a fifth in the back of my car if I had to deal with people. And people that are complaining about everything, left and right, it just makes me nuts. All right. This, I think, is going to be the last clip because we ran out of time again. But we're going to show more about the minimum wage and the way these guys love to exploit the American people. So, John, hit us with the clip. Billionaire industrialist and my future face twin, Charles Koch. <laughs> In an interview with the Wichita Eagle, the cute Coke said he wants to eliminate the minimum wage because it creates a culture of dependency. I'm living off of minimum wage. Because being on minimum wage, it's, it's really hard getting by. I, I live, my house is through Section 8, but um, you know, I can't afford to find anything extra or anything better. It's, it's really hard trying to get by. I think the fact that the Koch brothers are trying to take away minimum wage is ridiculous. I'm just filling out the forms that, well, my public assistance there in order to get assistance with anything. If minimum wage was just raised a dollar or two, I wouldn't need public assistance. Thirteen million a day uh, sounds wonderful, and I couldn't imagine anybody making that.